I'm going to say a few words about myself. Uh, then I will talk about how to win any battle against the Oracle license police. Uh, anybody here from Oracle? Yeah, just came in, but don't be afraid of me. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not. Just, uh, yeah. I'm not a self. I used to work for Oracle for 10 years, yeah. from 90 to 2000. Uh, I will also tell you a military secret. Very important, especially for uh, people in, in these areas here, yeah, about the Russians. And finally, I will uh, tell you how to survive as an Oracle DBA by creating more games. Okay? So, um, I, I, was, I was a real man once. I was a DBA uh, back in, in, in the late 80s, version 4, 1, 14, 5, 1, 22, and uh, Then I joined the dark side in 1990, uh, in order to support, and spent 10 years in the world. And then, uh, then I created a company called Miro in my garage together with a childhood friend of mine who two months ago stabbed me in the back and fired me with the help of the board. So now I'm creating a new company called Fair and Square and here I am. That's it. So, first of all, uh, somebody tell me when I have 15 minutes left. I will. You will. Thank you. How much time have I got left now? 25. Sure. Better get going. <laughs> Cheers. The best comment or question will be awarded one of these things. The worst comment or question will be awarded the other. Basically, uh, I'm going now to talk a little about the Oracle licenses. How many of you have worked with Oracle licenses and tried to find out what they are about and talk to maybe Oracle sales guys? You've been hurt. The trick is to know how Oracle works in turn. What will happen is usually that a customer is contacted by Oracle, and that's fair enough, and they are told uh, that we are going to uh, monitor you, uh, audit you, and like that. They will expect of you to do some work, or they will kindly suggest that you spend about $300 billion on hiring somebody from KPMG or, or something even worse uh, to do it for you. Somebody they have that need. They will also suggest that you install uh, a monitoring piece of software written recently by Thomas in Oracle Hungary. Uh, and then they will, it will, it will run for a while and then they will have a meeting with you and try to interpret the output. The interesting thing is that Oracle salespeople are not allowed to write anything to a customer that is legally binding. Only or to leave, or it has to go through all. So the sales guys, fair enough, will try to avoid this legal thing, which takes a lot of time, and try to get the customer to admit his guilt, his failure, his whatever. Would you 
real and the output of this looks reasonable. Actually, it should be the Oracle people telling them this is the truth, but it always goes the other way around because they are not allowed any freedom to force sales. Are you in sales or are you in real? I'm not in sales. I used to be a salesman if I have you. It's really difficult after 10 years with honest people in, in the support department. The, um, so the interesting thing is that they will, of course, try to get more money. And sometimes you will find that it's not really fair. But hey, they will talk to the about it. If you protest, if you're an IT manager, somebody who says, this is not fair, we have not used these uh, features, <laughs> we have installed this by error, yes, but we've never used it, all those things. Uh, your boss will eventually be contacted by Oracle and asked, are you sure this is a good guy for you? In order to get some cooperation. Here's the thing. When uh, when they contact you and ask you to run this program, kindly ask them to confirm in writing that this monitoring audit that the IT thing is working correctly and will not cause any problems. It's a, it's a fair thing to want. Please ask them to put it in writing in a way that is legally binding from them tomorrow. So that, you know, your legal guys can say yes, it's legal. And that's where it stops. That's where it stops every time. It's as simple as that. The sales guy are not allowed to. The legal guys don't want to. That's it. That's the end of that presentation. So um, the problem is that in most organizations, they will of course go to the next level and say, come on, we need to have a good relationship and all that. If the next level is just CEO, whatever, says no, it's only fair that you guarantee us that your own fucking program works correctly and gives out the correct results. And not, for instance, on certain Linux platforms, twice the number of users that are actually on the system at night. It's only fair. If the, if the CEO or whatever backs you on, you're good. It stops there. That's it. So, has it been tried? Yes. I finally convinced a medical company tried out because they had been basically raped by Oracle for many years. And they had just about had it. Um, and then they said, no, we would like to have in an email or in a letter stating that this is really binding for Oracle sign, that what we are doing is actually correct. They couldn't do it. And the national police, by the way, will get back to that. Now, so that's, that's it. It's as simple as that. Done. Now for a few tricks that even Oracle actually likes sometimes. One typical situation is that a big customer has bought more and more over the years. It's a trusted old customer. And now, they actually don't need some of the old shit anymore. So, they would like to just terminate those licenses. Well, are you familiar with something called a license set? A logical bundling or 
all the licenses into one yeah, logical set. Oracle salespeople will do anything they can to make you move all of your licenses into one set. Claiming, which is true, uh, that is much easier. You bought this in 1990, you bought this in 94, you bought this in 98, and it's all different products, different conditions. Let, let's, let's move it into a license set. It makes it so much easier. You will have more beautiful sunsets. You will have a better sex life. And you will have perfect hair. And if you do all that, you get a, uh, a discount of uh, 42%. Now, you want to terminate some of your own shit that you're definitely not using anymore. But that means that if they have to remove this from the license set, they will of course have to increase the payment. Because they gave you the discount based on everything here. If you had had it like this, you could just have terminated this and this. Now, you're fucked. You're fucked. So, we've had a couple of interesting situations back in, in my time in Miracle where very old, faithful customers that had spent four hundred fantasillions on Oracle software throughout the decades wanted to terminate a few licenses because they didn't need it and uh, got this uh, punishment. So what you can do is that you terminate the whole ship. Stop everything. Stop everything. It's an interesting reaction that comes from Oracle. Really, really interesting. Sometimes they really want to talk. But then you can get some deal out of it. And other times, okay, you have no um, support and update rights anymore. You still have the license rights. You bought the licenses in what is called a perpetual license. Perpetual means forever. It means 2,150, it'll still be valid, running on, I don't know, your glasses or something. It'll still be valid. But you have no support, no update. And if you want to start up support again, you will be fined a 150% fine for the time that you didn't have to pay. Also, what do you do with you? throw away the whole shit. And then, you either buy new stuff, because you only need a little, or you buy a hosting license. What you do is you find a, you're a customer, you find a good or a popular one, and you say to them, why don't you guys buy a hosting license for Oracle? Okay. Hosting licenses are actually cheap and good. And they are meant. If, I, if I'm an Oracle partner and I install a hosting license on my server and all that, I am allowed to run all of Denmark on it. If I can. <coughs> I may need more processors and pay more for the hosting license. But that's my right. That's a hosting license. The interesting thing is you're allowed, as a partner, to run that hosting license at the customer site. Get it? So a big customer that has a lot of Oracle shit, a lot of old shit, yada yada and all that stuff. Consider Terminating it all, and getting a partner, you know, to buy a hosting license and install it 
on the very same hardware that used to run all the old Oracle licenses. The sales guys love it. Why? It's new revenue. Yes, it's new revenue. They don't care that they're slaughtering the old one. They love it. The other trick, which can only be done on a national level, is the most beautiful one I have come across yet. Denmark, they created something called National IT Center, State IT Center. Something you will know will not work. Mm -hmm. I mean, put those words together, state and IT and center, and you know, fuck, it's going to be bad. So they're going to put, of course, all these things from all the ministries into one center, and they are already doing it and they're already producing these predictable results. For uh, Sting uh, and I, uh, at least in Miracle and in your current company, it's been good business. We live off problems. But uh, they did have a problem. When you transfer an Oracle license from one legal entity to another, Oracle slams 15% of your yearly uh, yadi yadi thing on top of it as a, uh, as a punishment for transferring your licenses to another people entity. So they were looking at transferring for billions of Kroger from ministries into this new legal entity, the state IT. It was getting prohibitively expensive. And Orange's lawyer says, and once, when they one day, when they came to the meeting, was presented with a thing they had never seen in their lives before. A royal resolution from our Queen. Stating that it's legal to transfer all these ministries to this new thing, it was the same. The entity. Done. But these Oracle guys, they have been like, what? Some of my old colleagues were present. And they said, what? California law and oh, do you think anything is above our queen? <laughs> Maybe not. No. That's the coolest trick I've ever witnessed. I wish it was my idea, it wasn't. <laughs> it's a fantastic thing. Hey, okay, the motherfuckers, we will ask the Queen to write a small letter. That's it. So if you have a Queen or a King, <laughs> great trick. So if we had a President, it won't help. Yes, it would. It would. Yes, okay. a presidential order. Same thing. As you know, presidents. Some countries can actually order them to go into war and other things without asking all these idiots. <laughs> Parliament, they can also do presidential orders. Nothing is about it. Uh, so it's for the consolidation thing stuff. And it, it can actually work very well in private companies too, where they are fighting with these legal entities. Thing because they have different subsidiaries. Has to be kind of public, otherwise I don't think the president or the queen will actually like it. This fee, the fifteen percent fee, is that of the original license or of on the support that you're actually paying here? It's on the uh, it's on the uh, support and update rights. <coughs> Just 
just one story, and then I will get on with the military procedures. Ten minutes left. Thank you. Uh, there's a national security issue. Had a meeting with uh, with a large partner, a large organ partner in Denmark, who is abbreviated with three letters, starting with C. And um, they, of course, make money out of selling Oracle licenses to the national police because they get that 30% of the Oracle for, for doing that. So there was a meeting with so the national police. Parker and Oracle, where Oracle said, well, our audit shows that you actually had this and this and this installed for three months last year, uh, so you actually have to pay 400 uh, billion euros per second for that, approximately. And the national police said, we never used that, it was an error, and it was actually installed by Oracle consultants. That had nothing to do with it. They would have to pay this, this fee. National police said, well, we're actually not going to do that. The Oracle guy said, well, you have to contract with you. What you can do, the national police said, is that you uh, take this case to court. Maybe you want to do Otherwise. Uh, because we have the national lawyers in the uh, Ministry of, of Law and Order. They are really boring, they are really slow, uh, and I don't think they like this, but you are very welcome to write to them. Ah, maybe not. So just, just threaten them with national lawyers. Ministry of Law and Order, that kind of thing. Just, just tell them it will be really slow, but then again it will be expensive to compensate for the slowness. And that will usually make them forget about those things, but only when it's when we're talking national institutions. So those were my Oracle tricks. Any questions, comments on that? Any tricks? Maybe stop buying perpetual licenses. Yes. Like yeah. there, are, there are term licenses that will give the way you have, you can buy for one year, two years, five years, whatever. Yeah. And it's a bit more expensive, but it'll, it'll turn over automatically. And, but how many systems do you really know that you will be running for, the, for perpetuity yeah. forever? Yes. Um, so. Sometimes it makes much more sense, and especially test license, your test system has to be licensed. Buy a one year license, it costs you like 30% or something. Yeah. There is this old truth that when you can, you should all wear a free bondage. Yeah, good, good advice. So, anyway, enough of that military secret. submarine hitting the cliffs in Sweden. Does it ring a bell? It was a whiskey class submarine from Russia, from the Soviet Union, by the way. Uh, so it was named Whiskey on the Rocks, this incident. It was in the middle of the island thing around, you know, so the, the submarine, which is a fairly big one, would have had to maneuver like this to get it there. So it was no accident. And yet the Danish press, the Swedish press, and everybody said, it's an accident. The Russians are peaceful of the people. Everybody knows that. What actually had happened, you can, you can look it up uh, if you write whiskey on the rocks, so we can get the part of the story. Here's the rest of the story. The Swedish uh, Navy had noticed that the Russians were uh, running around inside their uh, territorial waters with uh, divers, with uh, 
in his arms, uh, two or three persons in his arms, and uh, real submarines. So they first tried to use uh, diplomatic channels. Russians said, we are, of course, not into territorial waters. Okay. Then they tried to go public, saying there are actually Russian submarines out here, and they were made the laughing stock of the whole world. There was even a known researcher who said, no, that is not the, uh, the sonar picture of a submarine. This is actually a school of hearing <laughs> farting. <laughs> he was back in Denmark two years ago repeating his theory that it was actually hearing farting. Anyway, so they couldn't get through to stop to, to make these Russians stop with diplomatic things or with publicity. So they did something else. They discovered that the Russians, in order to navigate inside this Arctic, you know what I'm talking about, Scare Goran, uh, had placed um, uh, electronic guides on the bottom of the sea because these big submarines navigating in darkness, ah, it requires some careful thought. They also discovered that in the strait between Sweden and Denmark, the Ørsel Strait, they had placed three so that the Russian ships and submarines would go through. So I have this story from the Danish uh, Navy Special they were contacted by the Swedish Navy Special Forces, the Kustjäger, um, and said, we are going to move one of these light things, these guy things, onto the cliffs. Why don't you take one of the things in Ørsson and move onto your shores? Splendid idea. So at the very same time, one of these things was moved onto the cliff in Sweden and onto the shore up north of Copenhagen near Elsie. So, everybody knows about the submarine that just went onto the cliff. Nobody knows that three Russian ships went on the Danish shore and near Elsinore is onto a, a sandy beach. And then the Ministry of Defense called the Danish uh, Special Forces the front uh, and said, you have to move it back. What if some oil tanker or something spills oil and we have, you know, you have to move it back? And they were furious. Fuck, they were mad. They now I had to move the whole thing back down in the middle of the channel region. They thought it was brilliant. But anyway, the Russians stopped. It was the end of it. That was, that was how it all ended with all this. Uh, submarine thing in Swedish waters. And that was the military scene. How many minutes? Am I done? Oh well. Then we'll forget about how to be in the Thank you very much for showing up. <laughs>